Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gary with Jenna Fan TV, man. Back at another video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the videos, man. Let's get to today's topic. So, y'all gonna go over Ravens injury report very briefly, but I also want to talk about the Ravens need to find a consistent level of play, and that starts with we gotta look at John Hartwell, okay? So, listen, that's first. Let's go to the Ravens injury report. It is good news for the Ravens, all right? So, everybody yesterday that we talked about pretty much, uh, that practice in full has no injury designation. So we're talking about Odell Beckham, Jadavion Clowney, Marlon Humphrey, uh, Pat McCarry, uh, Morgan Moses, uh, Geno Stone, all with no injury designation. The only person that has an injury designation is uh, Keaton Mitchell, but he practiced in full all week. Um, I don't think the Ravens have activated him off the 53 man roster as we currently, I mean, to the 53 man roster, excuse me, as we currently stand. But he's practiced in full. Um, and Odafi always, Odafi always out. He didn't practice all week. So the Ravens are going to have pretty much their full complement of people who aren't on IR, obviously, uh, available to play in this game in London versus the Tennessee Titans. Okay. Now, tomorrow I am going to do like, you know, how I need to do the full game preview with all like the numbers and, you know, the keys to the game, X factor, stuff like that. I am going to do that. But today I did want to talk about, um, the Ravens need to find a consistent level of play, and that starts with John Harbaugh. Okay, now this is what I mean. The Ravens have been the kind of team where they will play up to their competition, they will play down to their competition. All right, uh, the Ravens, uh, like later this year, right? I've seen fans um, nervous because the Ravens have to play the 49ers later this year, right? 49ers are like probably the best team in the league right now. To me, those games don't worry me, right? The Ravens will show up to the 49ers game, and they, they might win that game, but overall, I believe that they'll play very well. The Ravens often don't get embarrassed on the John Harbaugh in terms of teams that, you know, they quote-unquote might lose to, right? That doesn't happen. But the issue is that when they play teams, right, where they are in their, it's in their favor, it's the advantage is theirs, they just don't show up to play very often. And every time after one of those games, we hear the blame dispersed all around except for the head coach, Right? And I think John Harbaugh gets a lot of pass because, you know, he comes from a special teams background, things like that. But John Harbaugh has coached all kinds of positions all over his um, football coaching career. So he hasn't just only been a special teams guy, but he obviously came from that when the Ravens hired him. All right. So when I look at this Ravens team, right, we go back to last season. OK, so last season, I just got a list of disappointing performances and it could be more. But I took some games out because. Those are games where Tyler Huntley started, you know, the Ravens weren't, you know, they were out Lamar Jackson. So I'm not going to put those games on here. So Miami, 42-38 loss. That was a collapse. The New York Giants, 24-20. Um, the Ravens didn't show up well for that game. It looked like they were prepared to play. Carolina, 13-3. They won that game. They did not look, did not look good in the game, right? So the disappointing performances is not just about wins and losses. It's about when they have a team that they should beat, they don't show up. Right, and they still and hey, they still might win some of those games, but this is about finding a consistent level of play. All right, Jacksonville 28 27 collapse at the end. Denver Broncos game, they won that one 10 to 9, uh, but very, very disappointing performance all around. Okay, like I said, the Tom Hunley games, I could go into more. There was three, there was a 13 to 3 loss versus Cleveland, there was the uh 16 13 loss to Kenny Pickett in Baltimore, the corner of the end zone to Najee Harris, that was a loss. Uh, 16-13, like I said. And then the Atlanta Falcons, 17-9. That was a win. Uh, but I don't like how the tape played over on that game as well. All right. Then you get into this season. Okay. Already, Indianapolis Colts. Gardner Minshew is the quarterback. 22-19 loss. And then Pittsburgh, obviously the game we just happened last week. 17-10 loss. So the Ravens are 3-2 and two on the year with two losses in games that we say that they should have won. But every time that these games happen, we talk about the players executing. We talk about the offense doing this, the defense giving up the lead. And all of that is true. That's what happened, right? John Harbaugh doesn't uh, make the players drop passes. He doesn't make the guys uh, have penalties. He doesn't make the guys have mental errors. But at some point when – and I could have gone back more years. I just decided not to. Let's, let's keep it more current, right? I could have been – I could have went back further than that. Um, at some point, the excuses have to run out, Okay. When you have a team where there's consistently the level of play drops depending on who they're playing, depending on uh, whether there's a good opponent, bad opponent, that all starts in preparation. It all starts with the head coach. So John Harbaugh can't always skate off on these kind of games. Ravens have these disappointing performances and say that, well, the players just have to do better. Okay, sure. But also some of that falls on the coaching staff, right? 
there are coaches all around the league that have been fired for way less things than John Harbaugh has been fired. That that John Harbaugh has kept his job for. Okay. Now I'm not here calling for John Harbaugh's job every week. I'm not. I'm not here to do that. But I bring it up this week is because the Tennessee Titans are two and three. Right. Um, they they embarrassed the Bengals. You know, Joe Burrow wasn't right on his calf or whatever. However, you want to make the excuse for Joe Burrow, or whatever. They beat them, and then they beat um, they beat another team too. I can't remember what team they played, but they they they're two and three on the season. Okay, this is a game that the Ravens are the favorite in. The Ravens should win. I don't care that it's in London. I don't care that it's you know a neutral field technically. This is a game for the Ravens to win. Hold on, let me fix the camera up real quick. Okay, this is a game for the Ravens to win. So. When it comes to Sunday, 9.30 in the morning, my time, right, the Ravens need to be prepared to come out there and find a consistent level of play and beat the Titans, all right? Because I'm fully prepared to come on here and, and talk in front of you guys on Monday and say how the Ravens came out there, had a disappointing game, you know, uh, they just couldn't get things right, this and that. But we shouldn't be prepared for that. We shouldn't be expecting that kind of thing. Hold on. So, yeah, we shouldn't be expecting that kind of outcome from the game. We should be expecting the Ravens to come out there and do their very best and play well, right? The Ravens have to find a consistent baseline of play, period, right? When you have teams that are elite teams, right? So, when you look at the 49ers and how they play this year, right? And, you know, you actually watch their games. No matter who they're playing, they play up to their standard, right? And I'm using the 49ers because the Ravens want to be one of the best teams in the league, so you have to look like some of the best teams in the league. When you want to be in that kind of category, you have to play to a baseline, right? The Eagles, right? The Eagles have been up and down this year a little bit as far as um, maybe their performances. They won the games, but they've been a pretty consistently good team this year. They haven't had games where they stuck it up, okay? So the Ravens have to find a way. And that I'm, I'm saying it starts with John Harbaugh to be consistent week in, week out. All right. Over the last two years, because we're going to keep it recent. Like I said, I could go back further than this. Over the last two years, the Ravens haven't had that baseline of where you know what you're going to get from this team week in, week out. And for me, that starts with the head coach. All right. John Harbaugh is a guy that's widely regarded around the league as a, you know, a top five, top ten head coach in the NFL. And that's great. All right. But at the end of the day, if the team can't play consistently how you want them to play, that has to come into question. He can't always skate by on the excuses laid on laid on the uh the full brunt is laid on the players. The players obviously are the ones out there on the field, they control some of the outcomes, they have to play better. But this some of this lies on the head coach as well. All right. We just gotta be honest about that. When it comes to coaching decisions, challenges, things like that, they're also natures uh uh clock management. There are also things that John Harbaugh has come up short. We saw it in the Colts game, okay? We saw that when the Ravens, um, after the, the they got the safety, got the punt, the Ravens did communicate to Zay Flowers not to call a fair catch, to run it out a little bit and get to the two-minute warning. Now, should, should Zay Flowers just have done that off of, off of his mind? Yeah, of course. But he was going off the direction from the coaching staff. When circumstances changed, the Ravens didn't communicate to him the change. That's an issue. That's a coaching problem, all right? Uh, a lot of teams that are heavily penalized, they look at coaching. So when I say these things about the Ravens, I'm not here to say everything that goes wrong with the Ravens is John Harbaugh's fault. I'm not saying that. But at the end of the day, he cannot skate by completely free um, and everything gets laid in front of the players. It just can't happen like that. Do I think the Ravens will, will let go of John Harbaugh midseason? Of course not. Do I think the Ravens will let go of John Harbaugh at the end of the season? No, because something colossal will have to happen for that to even be brought up. But we have to remember, in 2018, the Ravens were this close to saying, hey, it's time, you know, Harbaugh and the Ravens, we go our separate ways. But, you know, Lamar Jackson came in, the Ravens made the playoffs, and everything has changed since then. All right? So we weren't, we aren't that far removed from that. All right? So the point is, the point of this video, the ending of this video is the fact that the Ravens need to find a consistent level of play, and that starts this week versus the Tennessee Titans. You play a team that you're better than, go out there, show them that you're the better team, and win the game. And that's my thoughts on it. So, um, you know, you guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the videos, man. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments and, you know, how to all comments. So, it's Gabriel, which is on the Fan TV. I'm out.